Hey, welcome to the Bill and Franz Show. I'm Franz. And I'm Bill. And today, we're going to talk about Hollywood and guns and Julian Assange. Stay, Stay tuned. tuned. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome to our Survivor episode, the Survivor episode of the Bill and Fine Show. Bill, what's going on with the Weekly People Elite founder? Julian Assange, right? We all know about him. He's the dude who was the WikiLeaks founder who released all sorts of uh, top secret things. So the United States is pissed at him. Uh, Switzerland is pissed at him for assaulting some underage girl or at least right. sexually whatevering her. Right. And Which uh, I, by the way, do not believe he did. I think it's just a setup, but that's just Ron's being, being um, you know, parenthetical. <laughs> anyway, so um, strangely enough, Ecuador, this president of Ecuador seems to have taken a liking to him, probably because he's anti-big big United States and UK. Right. And uh, but he has taken so he's taken asylum in London. Uh, so he's technically in Ecuador because that's the way it works internationally. Is embassies embassies are technically the ground of the country that they represent. Right. Well, man, I, I, I'm kind of like. I'm, I'm kind of there. I'm, I'm kind of like in the position where, if they, if Ecuador gave him asylum, let him go. I mean, because I, I, I mean, I know he, he, he let some, some secrets out and stuff like that, and maybe he should have been let out. We still don't know who killed John F. Kennedy. You know what I'm saying? So should he be prosecuted for this? Because if we, if we don't find out who's behind all this bull crap that's going on, we can't find out who our corrupt politicians are. I disagree. <laughs> no, I think if you, uh, I mean, if you release top secret information of the government, whether or not you think it's a good idea, that's definitely against the law. And there's a number of countries right. that are out to get him. And uh, so anyway, one of the things you haven't mentioned yet is that he's holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. Right. And they, they, the, the British are saying, you go ahead and try to get from the embassy to the airport and see what happens. We are going to arrest you. All I know is this, if they gave him asylum, um, we've given political prisoners asylum before too. So, I don't know man, I'm just, ah oh, man, I, I mean, I don't know. Well here's what I'm concerned about, I'm concerned about the, the UK, I think they're too smart to do this, but the idea of storming an asylum, uh, st storming an asylum, storming an embassy would set a very, very bad precedent. I agree. One of the beautiful things about embassies is, if you're a national from a in, a in a foreign country, you can go there to a safe haven. People do it all over the world. It's Americans all over the world, they, when they're in some crazy place like Iran or something, they go to the embassy and they're relatively safe. If the country that holds the embassy starts storming, then that that destroys the whole international uh, respect for the autonomy of embassies, and that would be that would lead, that would be a slippery slope. We do not want to go down. That would be something that would just lead to total chaos, and then. It's gonna it's gonna lead to lawlessness, you know, in my view. So I don't know. I'm I'm on the border with this whole Julian Assange thing because I kind of feel like you know I still want to know who killed Kennedy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want to know because if we have crooked officials in our government that's doing these secret things, I want to know so we can get them out of there. Well, you know what I think? Yes, I do. <laughs> I mean, we all do. And that's good, that's good, we should have a different opinion. <laughs> I'm so square. <laughs> what else is on your mind? Well man, there's a, um, there is a headline going out, or that's out that's talking about um, juveniles getting life in prison. Mm -hmm. And I'm on the fence with that too. Yeah, I, I, I would think as a general rule though, um, I could think of a few exceptions, but I mean, juveniles in general do not have any influence on policy. Well, I think the story the story came up because uh, Sarah Kuzman was convicted with life in prison at age 17 for um, robbing and killing her pimp. And um, what she said was that, that the pimp introduced herself to her when she was like 13. 13 or 14, and he can't, he's been corrupting her and using her and abusing her ever since then. But at 17, she, 
kills him and robs him of whatever money is on him, I guess, and leaves and gets life in prison. So the question is, should a juvenile get life in prison? That juvenile most certainly should not. Right. I don't think she should either. <laughs> now, I'm pretty sure me and Bill is in agreement on this one that it depends on the severity of their crime. crimes. Uh -huh. You know, if a, if a juvenile is purposely murdering people, shooting people, killing people, I mean, doing this type of stuff, I mean, her circumstances are a lot different because she was abused for three or four years prior mm -hmm. to killing this man, this, yeah. this so-called pimp. But if you're just a blatant killer and you're 16, 14, 12 year old, and you're just killing people, hell yeah, you should get life in prison, maybe even death. I would disagree with that because I'm a raging liberal. <laughs> I would say that uh, generally, people uh, there, there's there's a lot more imprisonment uh, of adults and children than there is rehabilitation, right. and that's obviously a damaged person that will do that, uh, psychologically damaged that would be doing such a thing. Right. Back to the girl, I have a general, I have a general sympathy. You know, whenever there's a whenever there's a prostitute and a pimp, I'm going to side with the prostitute. If I'm going to sympathize with a murderer, it's going to be the murder of a pimp. So, bear that in mind, all you pimps who are watching this show. With let's, that, uh, let's take a break. The Bill and Franz show is not sponsored by Cheap Wine. Well, they show me! <laughs> Come on, girl. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the Bill and Franz Show. What's going on, Franz? <laughs> well, man, the killer of John <laughs> Lennon um, has an opportunity, his seventh opportunity, to get parole. Okay? Um, I would like to say we are not going to mention his name. Whenever someone does an assassination, right. don't give them the satisfaction of mentioning their name as a general rule. Right, right. They don't need any more camera time at all. But his, John Lennon's killer is up for his seventh hearing for parole. Um, he shot and killed John Lennon 32 years ago. Bill, do you think this man should get out of jail? Nope. And why is that? Well, <clears throat> you know how I believe in redemption? Right, right. Uh, last I heard, <laughs> last I heard, um, he is still smug and pretty darn proud of it. Okay. And, um, I know that he goes up for parole all the time, and that's one of the reasons they don't want to release him. Okay. The other reason that they don't want to release him is for his own protection. Right. Got a lot of Beatles fans out there. They probably want to get revenge for that. They would. Yeah. If he stepped out in the streets of any of the Western civilized world or whatever, there'd be an uncivilized person that would want to take him out. Right. Right. Well, my take on this is if he has no remorse about what he's done then he's more damaged goods than we think. And it's probably better for him to stay locked up because it's safer for him to be locked up. If he has no remorse, then, dude, we don't need you free to be walking around in society. Sorry. Stay locked up. The people have spoken. You see how serious we are? We are serious about crimes being committed. I mean, it's, it's crazy. And the crazy folks, if we can't shoot you, which Bill said we shouldn't give you the best death penalty, if we can't kill you, then at least we should be able to lock you up forever. Or should you, I mean, he's he's in a, he's locked up in an institution. Right. But if you can't be fixed. So, Bill, let's, 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 let's just go ahead and hit it, man. Hit the nail with the hammer. All right. What should we do about these these gun laws, man, these gun regulations? If this Should this continue? Well... I know we're in Missouri. I know we're in Missouri, and Missourians love their freaking guns. But I don't. I think there's too many guns, and I think they should seriously restrict. That's right. Restrict. Right. Here's a question. Man walks into, two men walk into a uh, post office. Right, right, right. One with a semi-automatic, the other with a baseball bat. Give them one minute. Who's going to kill more people? Well, without a doubt, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to answer <laughs> this question. Of course, the man with the, the gun. And I think there should be some serious talk about regulation with guns. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. 
I'm not talking about impeding on anybody's right to bear arms. We should be able to bear arms because that's what's given to us by our forefathers. But it should be done in a reasonable, regulated environment. Mm -hmm. So, with that, I guess you got it from the Bill and Ron show. We're not saying that, that you should lose your gun rights, but we, should, we are saying there should be some gun regulation. I, I think there should be no concealed handguns right off the bat. No concealed, no concealed handguns. So That's open bold. carry. Just be able to open the carry. That's start. That's the beginning. Ooh, we're going back to the Cowboys days, baby. I'm from Texas, too. I'm with that. Okay. That's a start. <laughs> I don't think anybody, uh, regular civilian, should have semi auto uh, should have semi uh, should have automatic right. at all. There's right. no need for a freaking assault rifle. Assault rifle. You really don't need that. That's that's war time weapons. Yeah. We don't need that. I mean, a six shooter should be fine, or a fifteen clip should be okay. Mm -hmm. But a whole a weapon that can, you can unload thirty six rounds mm -hmm. in in, in Seven seconds. Nah, that's war, baby. That's wartime weapons. So, okay. More guns means more killing. More killing. It's okay. just that simple. To well, me. to me. And to each his own with an opinion. And <laughs> Bill, and I value Bill's opinion like he values mine. And we both agree on this right here. We just have to. Hollywood. Tell me about Hollywood. Man, I think we are donning a new era in Hollywood. Okay, Shay LaBeouf. Now, if if you don't know who this guy is, he was the main actor in Transformers. Well, something's going wrong in Hollywood. He got into it with Steven Spielberg, blase, blase. You know the go cat and fight thing that happens in in Hollywood. So now he says, "Screw Hollywood." He's going to Bollywood, which is the um, that's uh, the, the the big uh, movie industry in India. And so his first movie, I guess he's going to do with them, is called Nymphomaniac. And in this movie, <laughs> he will actually be having sex on film. <laughs> okay, the director or the actor? The director and the actor say this is what's happening. <laughs> the director and actor are going to have sex? But no, no, no. <laughs> now that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. But see, my question is, if they're going to start having real sex scenes in movies, uh -huh. does that permanently erase the difference between movies and porn? You mean cinema and porn? Cinema and porn, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I don't know. I would say, it's I, like many things, there's a, it's a continuum. Right. It's, I think it's going to be the start of something uh -huh. that's going to just get out of control. You know, maybe. Maybe. They still have ratings, don't they? Right, right. But so, I mean, I'm, I'm really <laughs> waiting to see how this thing is going to go, to tell you the truth, man. Because an actor having sex on camera for real with the girl, I mean, we get to see this, and the actress is cool with this, and he's cool, uh, he's cool with it. So, I'm sure he is. So, I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of young ladies out here going into this business, and there's a lot, a lot of young men going into this business. What does it mean then? Yeah, it means, you know, I mean, certainly, you know, there's already a lot of, well, you know, if you really take your actors, acting job seriously, you're going to have to, you know, take off your clothes on camera, or at least for me, right. the director right here, no. Right. Which is, that won't change much the second half. <laughs> See, it said very cynically. Fifty Shades of Grey. Ooh, this gray line is getting something else, isn't it? You need to go see it. I don't know if I'm going to see this dude have sex on screen because I don't know if I like him that much as an actor, you know, but I just hate the fact, to me it just seems it's going to put a ugly stain or something on Hollywood that's it's not going to be able to recover from. We have reality stars right now that don't do nothing to these stars and their stars. Yes. So where is this going to take us? But bear in mind, he did have to go to Bollywood to get it done because Hollywood's right. not doing it yet. Right. Exactly. Of course, Hollywood is doing movies and porn and probably everything in between, but... Right. I guess Hollywood is just waiting to see how this mm -hmm. plays with the audience. Money yeah. talks in both box! Do I want to see, um, what's her name, Jessica Alba having real live sex on screen? Do I want to see that? Do you? I won't answer that question <laughs> on this show, but thank you for enjoying Kicking it with the bill. <laughs>
<laughs> with Bill and Franz. And we just thank you. <laughs>